Hello, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today is Tuesday, September 15th. This is where we bring you the top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thank you for choosing to be here to get filled in and up to speed on everything that you need to know here in Northeast Ohio. We start with very difficult news today out of Canton. There is a six-year-old boy who was shot and killed in a shooting on Monday night, and police believe that it was an 11-year-old boy who shot the younger boy. Police found the 11-year-old boy at the scene when they were called to the shooting, and they did take him into custody. That child has now been charged with reckless homicide. The Canton Police Detective Bureau is still looking into where the gun came from, who the weapon belongs to, and how it ended up around the two young boys. They said in a release today that tragedies like this emphasize the need for firearm safety and safekeeping of firearms. If you know anything about this case, the police are asking that you do call the Canton Police Department. That phone number is 330-489-3144. Again, that number is 330-489-3144. And if you do have any information about the shooting that unfortunately took the life of a six-year-old boy in Canton last night, you can remain anonymous if you are able to call into the Canton Police Department. Now let's turn to an update about the Sherwin-Williams headquarters. We know that's coming to downtown Cleveland. They did announce it early this year, but of course, lots of things have been delayed because of shutdowns related to COVID-19. So now we know a little bit more about when we can expect that Sherwin-Williams headquarters to open. They were hoping to open in 2023. Not too far away, but now it looks like they're starting to plan to open at the beginning of 2024. So this new global headquarters, very big deal for the downtown area. This will be in downtown Cleveland. It'll be just west of Public Square. That's between St. Clair Avenue and Superior Avenue, right in the heart of downtown, right near Jack's Casino and all of the things that are going on. And they do say that it will be approximately 1 million square feet. So this will be quite the building when they do get everything situated. And the project has quite the price tag on it as well. It will be about $600 million to get everything up and running. The new headquarters was, of course, announced back in February when Sherwin-Williams was shopping around for locations. That's when they said, yes, we're going to do it in downtown Cleveland. It'll be by Public Square. And that was right before COVID-19 shutdowns started happening. So they've got plans to get things back up and running and hoping for a opening in early 2024. Now, here's something you didn't expect to hear after the news yesterday. Austin Seibert will probably start in the Browns versus Bengals game here at First Energy Stadium on Thursday, but it won't be for the Browns because, as you remember, kicker Austin Seibert was cut from the Browns yesterday. Well, it looks like the Bengals have picked him up on waivers. So Cody Parkey will be probably starting for the Browns on Thursday, and Seibert will probably be starting for the Bengals. That's according to Tom Pelissero of the NFL Network. Now, this happened because it was kind of a perfect storm of events for Seibert. The Bengals starting kicker, Randy Bullock, suffered a calf injury after missing what would have tied the game up against the Los Angeles Chargers for the Bengals on Sunday. I don't know if any of you are thinking that this is Hugh Jackson all over again. Remember, he was fired from the head coach of the Browns, and then pretty quickly he was picked up by the Bengals as their special assistant to the head coach. Baker Mayfield had a lot to say about that. He was definitely not happy about it at the time. I wonder what he'll have to say, if anything, about Austin Seibert going to the Bengals. Well, hopefully, for Seibert at least, this move works out better for him than it did for Jackson because Jackson was fired by the end of the season at the Bengals. So we'll see what happens for Seibert in the opening game against the Browns and the Bengals, the opening home game here at First Energy Stadium. Seibert was let go after he missed two kicks. He missed a field goal attempt and his only extra point attempt in our season opener against the Baltimore Ravens, which, of course, we lost 38-6 to on the road in Baltimore. Now, last year, this is Seibert's second year in the NFL, last year he made 25 of 29 field goal attempts and 30 of 35 extra point attempts. So he didn't get much of a shot. New head coach Kevin Stefanski not messing around here in Cleveland. Didn't work out for him in game one, and he said, all right, he's got to go. So now we've got Parkey. Parkey's been in the NFL for six years. Now, Parkey 
actually started for the Browns. He was our kicker in 2016. He kicked for us for 14 games. Since then, he's played for the Dolphins, he's played for the Bears, and he's played for the Tennessee Titans. So he was called up from the practice squad, signed to the 53-man roster for the Cleveland Browns, and we expect to see him starting on Thursday against the Bengals here at First Energy Stadium. Now, waiver transactions aren't finalized until 4 o'clock. So it won't be official official until then, but uh, all signs point to the fact that we will be seeing Austin Seibert in First Energy Stadium on Thursday. Here's hoping it goes better for us than it does for them. Now we have some more news related to Major League Baseball playoffs. The start of Major League Baseball playoffs are just two weeks away, so obviously this is something that they need to get figured out. Well, according to Ken Rosenthal of The Atlantic, Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association have reached an agreement for the playoffs to be played at neutral site bubble locations. So we're seeing the introduction of the bubble to Major League Baseball so that they can hopefully take the playoffs through to the end of the season. Now this would go for the Division Series, the League Championship Series, and the World Series, but not for the wild card round. The wild card round, which will include eight teams, that's expanded this year based on the shortened season, those will take place at home ballparks. It'll be for the higher seed in each matchup. We'll get to play that series. It's a best of three series. They'll get to play that at home. So right now, our Cleveland baseball team is currently number seven seed in the American League. We are three wins behind the Minnesota Twins for the number four seed. If they get to that seed, then they could play at home for the wild card round. So we'll keep an eye on that. Tonight, the Tribe plays the Cubs in Chicago. That's at 8.15 p.m. They also play there again tomorrow. So keeping an eye on that over the next couple of weeks to see where our Cleveland baseball team shakes out, hopefully able to make a playoff run there. Here's one more thing that you all definitely want to know about. Everybody loves those Aldi's advent calendars. So now we know when you might be able to get your hands on them. And they're starting with wine, which I think is a great choice. If you're going to start with one of those advent calendars, wine is a perfect place to start. Halloween isn't even here yet, but yet we still do want to know about this. And you all want to know about it because you're clicking on it. It's topping our website right now. Definitely top of the chart. So the 2020 advent calendars for Aldi's will go on sale very soon. They will hit the shelves on Wednesday, November 4th. And they will start at $69.99 for the wine advent calendars. Now, they're going to have lots of different kinds of advent calendars, but this is the one they're starting with. There will be more than 20 different types of these Aldi's advent calendars that everyone loves so very much this year. Some of the other options include beer, hard seltzer, coffee, cheese, chocolate, just to name a few. Tons of varieties, again, starting November 4th for the wine one. And those other options will be released throughout November and throughout December. I don't need to tell you these things sell out very quickly, but you might need to be reminded that you do have to get them at the store. It's not something that you can buy online or anything like that. You've got to actually go to the store. People line up for these things. Now, just remember this year you're going to need to practice those safety protocols. You'll need to keep your distance. You'll need to wear your masks. So get prepared, get masked up, get bundled up so that you can stand in line. You might be standing in line outside this year. People have been standing out line, standing in line outside in the past too because the line just kind of lines up out the door for these before the store is even open. So now you know. November 4th, that's the day to mark on your other calendar for your advent calendar at Aldi's. That's it for your three news now early update for Tuesday, September 15th. I'll be back here at 3 p.m. as soon as we get those updated numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health and the rest of the stories that are topping the headlines on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and I'll see you back here shortly. Stay safe and be well. I'm Stephanie Haney.